How was it getting y'all names out there when y'all started and how big, was, how, how important and vital was social media for y'all? Super vital. That's where we yeah. even got the opportunity to have these shows. And then just being out there, like, the kind of thing was like, we're like, oh, we're on TV. Everyone knows we're on TV. That's not the case whatsoever. No one knew we were on TV. So we'd have yeah, to be man. on social media like, yo, watch us on the Charlemagne mm. show. Watch us on, um, you know, or whatever, whatever going on. Thing by my mind. And the thing is, like, you had, like, people who was like, oh, I'm for sure going to watch it. But then you also had haters, like, yo, fuck y'all. Y'all not funny. Y'all weak. So, yeah, like, you had trash. to, like, never let that get you down and just, like, always Motivation. post every week. Like, yo, yeah. we're doing this again. We're doing this again. I remember our podcast, we were doing, like, maybe 6,000 listens. In the first week, which I know some people are like, that's a lot. That wasn't a lot to us at the time. But it was just like, if you get 6,000 listens and you busted your ass to make a podcast, are you going to make another episode the next week? But we just kept grinding. And every week, no matter how, we never listened to how many people were listening. So off the rip, you guys are doing it by yourself? Or did you sign with the company first and you were just kind of slowly grinding oh, that this, way? Was, oh, no. We, was, saw, we were working with, Red, shout out to Red Bull Studios. Yeah. But they had a great deal where they basically support artists. So there was no contract. They were like, you guys can record your podcast for free. We'll give you studio time. There's no licensing, and it has nothing to do with Red Bull. And shout out to Red Bull. Go on their website, because they do that for almost every supporting artist oh. in all types of cities. Yeah. They can hook your shit up. And if it wasn't for them, we would not have had our podcast. So we used to go to Red Bull Studios, 220 West 18th Street. Ah, 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 ah. Sure. All the real podcast it's listeners funny know that. that. New York niggas always know the address of everything. Yeah, I don't you know, got to. I, don't, I barely know what street I live on if it wasn't for my ex-wife's name. But these <laughs> niggas know the number we and the street. We know the street. number. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What, all what, New York people like rings. that, though. Like, yeah. Come on. Yo, press the third intercom. <laughs> yeah. But off of that, like, we, we started our podcast with that. And, like, we were just ripping and just going with it. And then opportunities came. Like, shout out to A-Track. He let us host Fool's Gold Day Off in Brooklyn. We were not ready for that. Because we went there. We were like, it's going to be like an hour. We're hosting Bro. this concert for nine hours, basically. Bruh. But people are loving it. And, like, we have the energy. And he's like, yo, this group is going to be late. Just delay the crowd for have 20 fun. minutes yeah. and we are just yeah. having the time of our lives i remember the locks came out and before they were like yo delay the crowd and i was like yo everywhere we go people, people want to know and the crowd just sings like, along yeah but like that kind of energy and at the end of the day there's people just standing there and we're like what are you waiting for they're like we're waiting for y'all we want y'all autograph yeah, yeah, man. Man. and like at this point we're like what kind of car was it, it was a, a rat four bro it's my mom's rat four shut the mommy like, we like, did this great concert, and then we just get his mom's RAV4 and you know drive saying, home. drive home, like, like yo, excuse me. regular shit. You know what but, I mean? like, even little things like that was just like, yo, there's something here. Mm -hmm. We could be something. Right, yeah, so, man. That was, I mean, uh, that was the illest part, too, because it's like a lot of people, like, you when you doing stuff, you don't realize, like, yo, this shit is impacting or people are seeing right. it or whatever. Yep. So that was just, like, when the Fool's Gold Day Off shit popped off, I, like, I just hit A-Track. I was just like, yo, I just DM'd him, like, yo, y'all need hosts? And he was just like, uh... I guess, yeah, y'all could, right. why not? So right. it was, made it happen, bro, and it was, Dope. you know what I mean? Like, and it was just show, it went to show, like, yo, my man is, he's he's, he's on timing. Right. Like, yeah. he's hip to our shit, like, he's down, he, he fucks with yeah, us. Yeah, shout out to A-Track, early you know adopter. Word. Shout out to, like, a lot of people we fucked with, like, they fucked with our shit early, and if you did that, we got you for life. Yeah, for like, life. we got That's you no matter what, never right. wrong, no matter what show we I mean, we've we obviously showing. ran across and, and seen you guys before, but you, when you guys came in here, your energy completely changed, like, I was reading the email on the way to falling asleep. I don't know what the fuck he was doing, but y'all came in loud and just energetic. And I'm just like, okay, Leah, let's, let's rock. Listen, like, yo, so we interviewed see. Quinta Brunson, and she was just like, yo, this is the She's loudest like, interview I've ever did. Shit. <laughs> but you got to remember, like, we've had every shitty possible job. You know we've been mm. locked up. Yes, like, right. yeah. this is really a job? Right. Like, I don't got no boss checking me. I don't got right. no time sheet. Man, like, Jack, take a shot for that shit right there, Jack. Word. Fucking go. Right here, I Jack, would, but I Jack, got to do with it. Take a shot for that take shit, Jack. Just because he was talking take that shit. Take, 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 take a shot. Take a shot. Take a shot. Take a shot. Make some noise. 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 Make some all the smoke, all the drinks. Yo. So 2016, you guys both start your show, Deezus and Meryl's on Viceland. Yes, sir. Half hour show, Monday through Thursday. You said you shot, what, 300 episodes a season? We did. Grind. Four days Grinding. a week. Talk Grinding. to us about that. Self-reporting, too. Don't forget that. Which For, for y'all that don't know, self-reporting means you take your own ass to the set. So I'm in the 05, 10, cloth interior, find the cord. Well, in the beginning, we had to drive ourselves there. And it was, yeah. like, weird because, like, we're trying to do a late night show, but we're also worried about like alternate side of the street parking. <laughs> so it doesn't really work. I'm like, I'm like, Trevor Noah doesn't have to deal with this shit. Yo. But no, we were just, yo, bro, we were grinding. Like it was at the point, there were times we'd walk in, we had no idea who the guest was. We had no idea what was going on, mm. but we just did it every mm -hmm. fucking day. 
And we made one of the best shows ever in the history of television, and I stand by that. You will never be another Deez and Meryl from Vice and standpoint. And it was like, as Meryl says again, junior college. We learned so much about just how to yeah, do yeah, it, how to interview people, it, yeah. how to come in on a Thursday when you're fucking tired and hungover. But you know what? You got to do the show. Mm -hmm. So you, you just get like 30 minutes of energy out of you. You do your interview and you die at the end. <laughs> and so having that experience, now you can do the Showtime show on Thursday and bang it out. There's never yeah. gonna be a time on the Showtime show you're like, I'm too tired for this. Because after the Vice and shit, like, we've been through everything. Yeah. We had the Santa Con episode. You had, like, a rip in your foot or something. He's, like, on Percocets. Yo, like, the shit was bro, a mess. Was fucked up. We got white kids still in the mic. I was feeling good on the perks. I was feeling, I was yeah. feeling great, but the old oh, no, white feeling, boys had me aggy. He was feeling I was great, ready to fight. but he was also you know like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, you know, like, I'm ready to fuck somebody up. Percocets, so. You know what I'm saying? Like, the well, all of that. Perks like, we, made so, we made amazing TV off of that, and it's just like, I'm glad we did that early in our career. So now it's just like, we, we can know how to do this.